This car lasted after for about many, many years. I saw one of these cars for sale 20 years ago. Very, very hard car to find. Very hard to find. Very rare. They made 666 of these cars. So it's called a Plymouth Sport Fury G. Doing a bit of extractor work on the Fury. This is uh, one of the issues. So I did get a set of used headers that were uh, not very old, or that didn't look good. That uh, I don't know what their origin is. I don't know what they've come off, but they were free, and I thought, well, I'll give it a go. I can uh, work with that. So by a stroke of luck, I don't know what these headers are off, but they fitted. They've been modified by someone in the past. They fitted pretty well, in fact really well, on the left side, which is the one I thought I'd have trouble with because of the steering box and all that, so very happy about that. But the right side's another question. So I managed to come right off the uh, right off the head and straight into the torsion bar. So I'm gonna to attempt to put a new collector. Now I think I'm going to run it about here, a bit further back than the original one. So it's a four and one inch and three quarter to three inch. I'm going to put it about there. And you've got to think about it a little bit. So I'm going to bring it down three pipes inside the, to the right side of the torsion bar. And I think I might have to bring out the fourth one under the torsion bar, which I don't really like, but even if, even as it is, I have to pull the torsion bar back to get the headers out. So it's going to make no difference whether it goes under or over. Normally I like to keep them over so you can... Torsion bar is not effective, but you literally can't get them out anyway. So anyway, so that's what I'm fiddling with. Uh, so I'll show you a bit of the progress as it goes. And see if I can get out of this problem. Okay, so we've got the extractors just tacked in position at the moment. I don't know how well you can see that. But I realised pretty quickly that it was going to be very hard to get all four down between the um, torsion bar and the chassis rail. So I elected to go, well one of the pipes was already going in that direction so I went under the torsion bar. So, um, Look, not the prettiest extractors I've ever seen but they certainly work good and uh, I did get them uh, for free, so I've just got to put the collector on the back. So you've got to use the old brain box a little bit doing this sort of work because I had to bring the back one, the, in, the two top ones in first before I bought this one in afterwards, otherwise I wouldn't be able to get past. So you just have to think about it when you're doing it a little bit. Um, and then bringing this under, underneath meant I didn't have to worry about trying to crowd it in there. If you had it built the extractors maybe from scratch, I probably could have got all four of them down inside the torsion bar, but the fact that I started with an existing extractor, I kind of made do, compromise, whatever you want to call it. But this stack of room in the torsion bar, it's not going to hit anything. It's not too low. It's definitely not lower than even the cross member, so it's not going to affect anything. Uh, then you've got to put a little blank in here and weld all this in, weld all, as much as you can with that up first. Then you put the collector on and then you can weld around the outside. The other thing you've got to think about is where you cut the headers. So you've got to make sure where you cut them, in this case, because I changed the bottom half, I had to cut them in such a place that I knew that I'd be able to get the welder around them. If you go cutting where the two pipes are butted together, you'll never get them welded. So you've got to think about that sort of thing too. So. Anyway, so it's coming along. I'll uh, finish up the collector and then I'll show you the end result. So they're in. It's not permanent. They've got to come all come, got to come back out again. I've got gaskets in and uh, put all the bolts in, but it basically they're roughed out. If you can call it roughed out. 
and then I've started to fabricate the three inch exhaust which is going to go three inch to the mufflers uh, and then I'll have two and a half inch tar pot so that should be plenty big enough for the spicy motor so it's looking good good clearance everywhere very good clearance on this side so my magpies come in and say hello what are you doing you're after a biscuit you can do some talking your friends talking what about you right oh there he is <laughs> He's singing for his breakfast. Hang on a minute, I'll get you some uh, biscuit. Bit of variety. Light bar, 70 RT Charger, 71 Challenger. To walk around. Little tester. Looking Fury. Drift a panel pan, don't see them much anymore. Create four speed. Right hand drive Barracuda. Cool. It's husband and wife. Got to be 300 cars here. Well, my not like that. That looks like Convertible Challenger. 
Right hand drive. 426 Hemi, four speed. So I think it's got a six speed in it. Yeah. It's a good Yeah. Nice purple VJ, uh, VK, limelight VH. It's a nice shape. Three, VH there, 340, that's a E55 they call it. VK. Yeah, charges here, feel like charges. Hello, Peso. This is a one of one RT automatic. Apparently, it was sold into England. That's why it's got unusual side marker lights. And it was brought back to Australia and restored. Apparently, it was full of rust. Done a beautiful job, from what I can see. Here in Australia, Plymouth Stamp. This is a Survivor. No mileage, I can't remember how many miles ahead on it was a minute. Looks like 18,000 miles. Yeah, unusual. Looks familiar, my old bomb. My friend's 300. It's Mark.
moving along with the uh, project, getting much closer to start up. Uh, mechanically almost finished. Uh, still got to bleed the brakes and put all the well, fluids in, power steering and transmission. I still got to do a PCV. I haven't got to rework these uh, air conditioning lines because they're not off this car. So I've got a bit of manipulating to do there. Uh, carburetor's on, it's got an Edelbrock 750 back secondary carburetor. Um, yeah, it's really coming up pretty good. So the extractors are all in. I've done the exhaust. So I'll just put the car up on the hoist and have a bit of a look. So almost buttoned up everything underneath. I'm waiting on a lower radiator hose. I'm waiting on the distributor. Uh, I haven't connected the fuel pump yet because I want to pressurise the uh, fuel tank and get to make sure the fuel's coming out at the pump. Uh, but the extractors are done and I made a three inch mandrel bent system down to two uh, three inch Flowmaster mufflers. So I'm hoping you can see that well enough. Or if he's always at me about putting some light up there. So I got my tail shaft in. Also, I haven't made complete tail pipes. I've got them coming out just either side of the tank for the minute. Because I think I'm probably going to run some resonators up the back. And then when the rear valance is on, I want to make the exhaust obviously to match that. If you do it now, I won't exactly know where it's going to end up. So the mufflers, the tar pipes aren't finished, but they're as far as I want to go for now. Gone on to the uh, dash. So basically I uh, had the dash pad uh, vacuum formed. So I repair it and then re-skin it, uh, vacuum. And then just something else to try and cover your bets a little bit is to go through the dash wiring. So. Look for any damage to any plugs or any wires. This is super original. This is really nicely uh, untouched, this wiring harness. So sometimes they're a total mess. They've got wires and add-ons and cutouts and you name it. This one looks totally original. Uh, one thing I do is, I can't see the plug, but I can show you. This is the uh, dimmer, light dimmer. And I usually unplug that and then bypass it and run the full voltage to the lights on the dash because they're never, they're never that bright. So I just basically eliminate the, the um, dimmer switch. Most times by now they don't work very well if they work at all. Yeah, so basically we'll run power. I'll put a battery up here on, the, on this block and then run power through as many uh, systems as I can and try and make sure lights and gauges are working as much as you can do with it out of the car. So, so I've kind of detailed it a little bit. Uh, it was pretty good anyway. Uh, redone some of the, you know, the silver lines around, just painted some of the silver lines that had been worn off over the years. Just make it look a little bit neater. So it's looking good. Looking forward to getting that back in the car. That'll be a big step. Once the dash is in, uh, then you just got to pop the steering column in. The steering column I've also had, got to have a bit of a look through. Haven't done that yet. Uh, I've got another steering wheel. This also looks in good condition except for the one main power wire which is very common. It gets hot and I have to make sure that actually is still a good connection because if not that'll stop things from working. So sometimes you've got to bypass that one wire around the plug but I'll look into that closer when the time comes. So yeah, so coming along and then I can start looking forward to doing the, uh, the bodywork. Once it's running and driving, of course, I can look forward to doing the bodywork. <laughs> 